Hi, I'd like to talk about, once again, mail disposability, but from a different perspective. I think it's often contended, or at least thought of as an issue that uh, stems from the external, that is to say, from females and society and projected onto males, but I want to touch on the relatively delicate issue of male self-perception and that self-perception with regards to the male's own disposability. That is to say that many males, indeed, I would argue that we have an almost instinctual uh, basis for perceiving ourselves as disposable. And a lot of this is uh, tied up with dominance hierarchy competition. And I'll get into that in a second. But having observed many things for several months now, I've, I've come to the rather firm conclusion, at least for myself, that uh, disposability is, is really just a, uh, an issue that touches every aspect of, of the male, from whether, whether it's societal, female, or the male's own view of himself. It's often thought that men are disposable because women perceive them as such, and that's only partly true because men are also disposable because they make themselves disposable. So there's no doubt, we have so much evidence that on hand to, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that, uh, the, that the female, the human female perceives the male solely as a tool and a utility in an effort to acquire resources. Um, and we know that, but if men, at least for millennia, had not been willing to make themselves into those tools uh, and those utilities to turn themselves into a means of disposability, uh, that, that perception on the part of women might have been at least to some extent mitigated. Uh, now, it, it's been argued in the past, and I can't argue against that, that in, say, Neolithic times, this, this model of male disposability was necessary for the propagation of DNA. And I won't, for the moment, I won't argue against that. But certainly in modern times, none of that is necessary. Um, we see, however, that male, male self-perception of his own disposability persists into the present. And I think it's one of those weaknesses that we all suffer from. So, for example, uh, personal anecdote, uh, about two years ago, when I, a little over two years ago, when I was still in a quote-unquote relationship. Um, it was very cold, and it was winter or late late autumn, and uh, I, I offered at the risk, well, I was freezing, I offered my jacket, my coat, to my, my then girlfriend, even though I was freezing my ass off for many blocks to come. Um, so some, of course, that was from a past dimension, a past life, but you see this as a demonstration of a very potent demonstration of of man's of men's willingness to sacrifice themselves, and how we really just don't have a lot of regard for ourselves. Um, another uh, example of this is what we see with uh, modern American military. So, for example, we don't thankfully have a draft anymore, although there's been talk of reinstating it, and I'm I'm quite certain that neither party, Democratic or Republican, would voice any opposition to it since uh, we, both parties, are parties of warmongers. However, we don't have a draft anymore. And so, the people who join the army are volunteering to do that. The question is why? Often there are economic reasons, but it's not just that. Since the vast majority of those who volunteer are, in fact, men, this is seen, I'm quite certain, on the part of these men who often come from poor backgrounds uh, as a means of increasing status, particularly with the dominance hier hierarchy. And climbing up the ladder of the dominance hierarchy, chain of command as it were, uh, in an effort, effort to acquire or be in a better position to acquire female reproductive resources. Uh, they do this, these men, to the detriment of themselves. Indeed, uh, many men have died this way, and many men have received grievous injuries, and many men have been psychologically and mentally scarred, emotionally scarred, for their military service, uh, and in large measure are disregarded. Uh, the care in the military, the medical care, is somewhat lacking. Uh, we have 
that weren't the case, there wouldn't be so many profound cases of uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. So, um, stress disorder, pardon me. So, we see a willingness on the part of men, really just across the board, to, to immolate themselves for the sake of women. And I, I am, as I said, I've come to the rather firm conclusion that men view themselves in large measure as disposable. And that is why it is so vital and so important that uh, men, may either if you're a man going your own way, I think it's even more important. Um, but if, if men truly think that the risks are, the, the, the vast and incredible risks are worth it in pursuing so-called relationships and marriage, um, that it will be almost inevitable that you will be in a position of uh, disposability. You, you will have to make concessions to your partner, and those concessions will also, uh, as once again, ineluct ineluctably end up in a form of you making a concession of disposability, saying, well, I guess I can do that, and it might be to your own detriment. Now, certainly you're not risking your life on a battlefield, but this is one of the possible consequences. As I say, as soon as a man enters into a relationship uh, or a marriage, he is making himself uh, disposable. For one, uh, he is at the mercy of the state uh, in a marriage. And not just for that, uh, this should be pointed out that many men who have this idea of a non-marriage long-term relationship, which I've seen advocated very often, think that uh, they're off the hook. That's not true. In many states and many countries, and here in Europe as well, cohabitation uh, for a certain period of time, whether married or not, will essentially equal uh, the, the same as marriage and the perception of uh, your status will equal the same as the status of marriage and the perception of the state, which means you are uh, well, at the mercy of the state and at the mercy of the woman. So uh, I think it's almost, I, I, I can't imagine men being in relationships without making themselves disposable. By its, by its very nature, the relationship is disposability. Now, I've heard it argued that uh, that doesn't have to be the case, but let me give you a textbook example of what happens when you don't make yourself disposable and when you stand up for yourself. In numerous occasions in past relationships, when I had consistently done that, I got a lot of argumentation, fighting, I would get manipulative uh, weeping and crying on the part of the female, and I would get a lot of resistance, and the woman just making my life a living hell. So this just goes to show that uh, it is a catch-22 situation. If you decide not to make yourself disposable, if you stand up for yourself and you say, no, this is wrong, I'm not going to deal with this, um, you, you can, you'll, you'll be dealing with a lot of shit because women are just not going to accept that. Um, it's very, very rare in my observation and observations of other uh, relationships that I, men that I'm friends with, as well as uh, readings I've done. On the other hand, if you choose to enter in a relationship and you don't do that, you will be making yourself disposable. Um, it's unavoidable. And this is the problem. And this is my great concern with the um, traditionalist movement, as it were, in, in, uh, in the MRA. Because uh, I've, I've mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. Now, let's, let's grant credence to what I think is the false notion that if the left were defeated, a golden utopia would be ushered in and everything would be peachy keen. Um, my question then to people who believe this or something along these lines that, you know, once the left is defeated, everything's going to be fine, um, that and everyone know, who knows me knows I'm a, I'm a lowercase l libertarian in the sense that I don't belong to the party, but I adhere strictly to libertarian beliefs. I am fiscally conservative and socially liberal. Um, but what would happen? Let's assume that government could be shrunk down to an ideal size, and I would propose minarchist, uh, minarchist structures for that, so you might have a court system, maybe some kind of law enforcement system, not much more than that. And you'd also go back to a federalist local state, uh, state structure as well, um, that 
yes, you would get rid of, in large measure, the leviathan of bureaucracy, or to a large extent, at least, at least on the on the, um, on the we'll say in the United States on the Washington level, the centralized level, uh, costs would be dramatically dropped, and so on and so forth. Uh, the war issue, hmm, I can't address that here. We'll talk about that another time. But let's assume that uh, what right what right wing leaning so-called libertarians talk about, and they only talk about the fiscal issues, they never talk about the war issue, apart from Ron Paul. Let's say all of this were to take place. What measures would be taken to make men aware of their own disposability in the eyes of society at large, in the eyes of women, and their only in their very own self-perception? The willingness to sacrifice themselves, uh, in, often, very often in vain, on all sorts of levels. So it could be as the example I gave, offering my jacket whilst freezing for 12 or 13 blocks. Or it could be a man deciding to join the military because he think it will up his status from the dominance hierarchy chain. Uh, so what, what, what would happen in that society? Um, I, I think what we could predict what might happen is what we've had for, well, millions of years. Men, once again, engaging in increased disposability. Um, now it is true, and I will concede this, that with a very, very large uh, bloated state, not only do we have this, this disposability issue, we have women wielding the state against men. <clears throat> but I want to enjoin men to realize that women choose to voluntarily choose to wield the state against men, that uh, this is their choice. No one is forcing them to, just as no one is, just because China or, or India might um, relax certain laws with regards to divorce, they are uh, choosing these paths. They are of their own uh, volition. Now, uh, either they're doing that of their own free will and their own uh, free uh, volition, or you could argue, I suppose, they're being manipulated by Marxism or leftism or something like that. Well, that says a lot. I guess women are really dumb if you actually believe that, and I don't necessarily believe that. So we have the, if we have a traditionalist society, which I think is impossible, given technolo technological advancement, which is another issue again, what, would, what measures would be in place to prevent men from uh, viewing themselves as disposable? Because by its very nature, the relationship is one of disposability uh, of the male. Women being the vessels of reproduction will always be viewed as having inherently higher value, both in their own eyes, the eyes of society at large, but also in the eyes of men, after all. The man wants to make sure his DNA is floating out there and uh, lives to propagate its own DNA. So this is the, the vicious cycle that I personally would like to break. Um, and it takes a lot of wherewithal and personal self-mastery and observation to realize that and, and also implement. Remember one of my recent videos, I talked about realizing something and then internalizing that. To internalize your own, your own perception of your own disposability and reject that. Now that doesn't mean being an asshole, but it certainly means, for example, that uh, you're not going to go out of your way. Um, one shouldn't, ideally, as a man, uh, you know, to take the, the the metaphorical bullet for the woman who doesn't give a rat's ass about you. That's the point. Um, if we can, but, but this is ingrained behavior. This is something that is core to us. We really need to be aware of that. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that many traditionalists embrace male disposability on a subconscious level. They're not even aware of it. For, for example, this is manifested in traditionalist lack of opposition to war. There are very few exceptions, say in politics, Ron Paul, but um, that war is a deprivation of uh, individual autonomy and certainly life. But because men view themselves as so disposable, they are willing to throw themselves into the gnashing teeth of the war machine and die, if need be, in an effort to achieve that status that they think they can achieve, even though it's unlikely that they ever will achieve that status, all in an effort to uh, gain access to female reproductive resources. But on a positive note, and I and I look back to I look back to one of Girl Rights Watch videos where she talks about this that 
and at some point in time, you, you were able to shame men into dying in order to gain uh, status. But the very existence of men going their own way, um, intelligent, capable men going their own way, who, if they wanted to, and I was one of those guys who, you know, had some semblance of a decent career, and I have half a brain and so on, going along this path, going along uh, society, societal prescriptions, um, that you can reject that disposability by mastering yourself and being aware of that. Um, I think this is very, very important, but it's an uphill battle. You always have to be aware of it. Um, you can never, essentially, you can never let your guard down. And as I said, my concern, one of my concerns is traditionalist lack of regard for male disposability, even though it's not, I've never heard a tradi traditionalist, well, that's not true, I've heard some post comments, but most traditionalists don't say, well, we, we, we support male disposability. No, it's subconscious, it's implicit in the very structures that they advocate. Um, it's very clear, obviously, that the left or left-wing politics obviously supports male disposability um, as well. So this is my inherent distrust, lowercase l libertarianism, just distrust of all political structures and all political so-called uh, wings or ideologies. Uh, you can attack things from a political level, but there's always going to be some um, residual residual effect of that, and we need to learn to deal with that residual effect. So, said, traditionalism in many ways enhances male disposability. Many men don't have a problem with that, it seems, uh, or they don't believe they do. I would su suggest you watch Barbara Ross's most recent video. Uh, he makes it very clear just how problematic that is. But, yes, so on a final note, Male disposability is as much an issue of self-perception uh, and one that needs to be overcome and conquered by, by oneself, by the man, male, by men uh, themselves, as it is an issue involving society and the way women view uh, us. So it's a, it's a reciprocal, it's male disposability uh, is, a, is based on a reciprocal relationship. It is based on the way men view themselves an effort to gain access to female reproductive resources, but also in, in the way women view men. And so it, this cycle feeds itself. Um, the cycle cannot be, be broken <clears throat> without abstaining from the cycle itself. That is to say, the cycle is self-perpetuating. A relationship, by its very nature, must result in male, uh, male disposability and the female, be, because she is the vessel of reproduction, having the trump card. It's unavoidable, and anyone. I'd, I'd like to see arguments uh, to to the contrary. All of society. One of the reasons it's not just left wing politics. All of society is geared towards women's health is because they are the vessels of reproduction. That is why they were protected. That is why it's women and children first. The only way this this cycle can be broken is 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 abstinence from these kinds of uh, relationship structures. To endorse such a, such, a, such a structure is, tacitly or otherwise, to endorse male disposability. You cannot have uh, a so-called perfect equality or even a semblance of equality as long as women remain the vessels of reproduction. So if men are willing to make themselves disposable, I can't personally approve that. I'm not going to stop them, and it's not a dictate to stop them. But I would suggest that men be very, very aware of their own perception of, the, of themselves as disposable utilities. Because many, many men are willing to put themselves in that position. Um, remember, as I said in recent videos, you are the only one uh, who can take care of yourself. No one else will. Uh, certainly women won't, and the vast majority of men are not looking out for your back either, because, like I said, they're willing to club you to death in an effort to uh, get, a, get a step up on, uh, on the dominance hierarchy, hierarchy ladder so they can gain female approval. Male disposability is a deep, deep, deep-seated issue of male self-perception, and it's one that requires personal self-mastery um, and constant vigilance and ultimately uh, total rejection. Thanks for watching.